Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground, and I cannot say this is Dave the Cyber Guy. Sorry, the title is taken by somebody else. My sad news to everybody out there, I have to relinquish my title because somebody else has claimed it, and he has the domain, the Cyber Guy. So cyberguy.com out there is Kurt Knudsen. And I only found out about this because I must profess I watch all news stations to try to get a good idea of what's going on out there, and I actually stumbled across Fox News, and he was a cyber consultant on Fox News. Uh, with me today, I have Hal, who still retains the title, The Networking Guy. Thank you for being on the show. Thanks for having me back again. Thanks, brother. All right, so the audience should be reminded we work for the University of Hawaii, Kapiolani Community College. You teach networking and cybersecurity. So do I. And we have a great time with it, and that's why we have this show. And uh, hopefully we, we entertain and inform at the same time and uh, keep people safe. And so today we're going to talk about how the internet has evolved and a big piece of its evolution is coming up again. And of course, Google's right out in front, mm -hmm. right? So first of all, we have to uh, ask our audience out there, uh, please come up with a new title for me because I cannot be the cyber guy, so I need to be something. And be nice. Okay. <laughs> I can I can. Um, can only imagine the responses now. <laughs> How about Cyberman? Cyberman. <laughs> Someone's going to call me the tick or something. <laughs> uh, you, uh, just be nice when you give me. I don't want a porn name, by the way. I just, I just need a cyber name. Uh, so for now, just Dave. Uh, let's talk about. Uh, I got some notes here about uh, Google and uh, their new implementation for HTTP3. Uh, HTTP3 is what uh, the Internet uh, Engineering Task Force, the IETF, is going to call it. But Google called it QUIC, right? Uh, QUIC UDP con Internet Connection. Internet Connection, right? yep. uh, Which is great, but they've, they've come up with other implementations. So let's talk about what HTTP is and how it works and why we care. And uh, then let's talk about what's going to happen now. So. Help me out. With HTTP, people take it for granted. We just open a browser and type in, you know, Amazon.com. We go to Amazon, and everything just kind of works. It's this ubiquitous, magical process now that we don't have to think about. But in days of old, 1989, you popped open AOL. You didn't have just HTTP. There was Gopher and Waze and all these other protocols, and we just finally standardized on HTTP. Why do we do that? What was the benefit? What do we get out of HTTP over TCP, and what is it? Well, HTTP is the protocol that runs the web. So that web browsers used to talk to web servers, and web servers used to send web content back uh, to web browsers. And uh, I guess it evolved from those other protocols uh, because uh, some of those other protocols had different purposes. They were more for, for file transfer or very like text-based content. And HTTP evolved to support uh, you know, multimedia. You can you can have, you can have video content, audio content, uh, dynamic uh, uh, web content. It's it's come a long ways from just the, like the the first web pages, which were just kind of black and white text and and not very exciting, it's become a lot more exciting now. So, they were just so, more informational than Yeah, more, than participatory. more multimedia, more uh, interactive. And so that, that's, that's how HTTP uh, kind of developed from those other protocols. And, and it continues to develop. We've had different versions of it. But uh, underneath uh, the actual web layer, there's what we call a transport layer. So there are these protocols that manage the connection between the two endpoints, between the browser that you're working with and the web server that you're actually talking to across the internet. So a protocol is like a common language between two systems. So you both know exactly. what, what, what that language means. I, I send you some data and you know what it means because we're both on the same protocol. Yeah, so it's like if you were speaking Mandarin Chinese and I was speaking Swedish, neither one of us would understand each other. We have to right. be speaking the, the same language or the same protocol. So this is just the it's 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 the set of rules of, of how do we we talk to each other. So HTTP sets up the rules for web browsers to talk to web servers, 
And these transport protocols set up the rules for how uh, your computer actually talks to the, the servers and how those connections are managed. And there are uh, two main protocols, uh, transport protocols at, at this layer, uh, TCP, which is Transport Control Protocol, and UDP, which is User Datagram Protocol. And uh, they really, why do we have two? Well, they were designed for different purposes. So one's connection and one's connectionless. One's connection-oriented, that's TCP, mm -hmm. and the other is connectionless, as you said, it's, that's, that's UDP. So uh, TCP was designed to guarantee every single bit of data was going to be guaranteed to be delivered and received. So it, 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 it does all these extra uh, steps. It, 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 it has the, uh, the client do a handshake with the server before any, uh, any data is, uh, is transferred to make sure that they're, you know, they're both connected on both ends. So if I'm a, uh, if I'm a client in your server, like I have, I'm a browser and a PC, and I'm browsing Amazon.com, the first thing we have to do is I send out a signal, hey, I'd like some information. You say, yes, I'm here, and I respond, okay, I got that signal. So mm -hmm. now we have a three-way handshake. Mm -hmm. So now we have a connection. Syn, SYNAC, and AC, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. After, after that's done, and that takes a lot of effort, Right? There's a lot, of, there's a lot that goes into that. There's a lot of little flags, a lot of little bits. Mm -hmm. uh, we send uh, data in packets in TCP, right? So we, we, we chunk up the data. So if you have a, a bunch of data, you put it into pieces, basically, right? And you give each one a sequence number. And the reason is because over the internet, you might not have a direct connection. Sometimes you take alternate routes, and each router and each uh, waypoint, or hop as they say, uh, is going to reroute you on the most efficient path it sees at the time. And maybe I'm on my phone and I'm switching from mobile network to Wi-Fi back and forth. So it's not always the same connection, as you said. So that's why they, you, you have the sequence numbers so that as, as things arrive, you, you know how they fit together. Because they, they as you said, they may not always come over with exactly the same path. Right, right. So that, that's all built into TCP. Mm -hmm. We have the sequence numbers. We have some security features built in there. And, uh, and that's, it's a complicated system. It takes what's called a lot of overhead. There's mm -hmm. a lot of extra besides the data that I'm sending you. I have to yeah. send a lot more data to make sure this all happens. There's an acknowledgment for every piece of data you send me, I send you an acknowledgment. So there's a lot of back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, but, and if you drop one, I'll send it again. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Right. But that absolutely guarantees that every single bit is is received on the other end. So it's, 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 it's what we call the reliable protocol and that, and that delivery is guaranteed. It's like sending uh, you know, a letter with the post office with that little green uh, card that comes back to you to acknowledge, yes, it was received, it's yeah. signed by someone, yeah. and you know, it's guaranteed. UDP is the opposite. You, UDP, you just send the, send the data and I hope it got there. Fire and forget. I assume it did, Yeah. but I'll, I'll, I'll never know for sure because I don't get any kind of uh, Acknowledgement. So, why do we have these these two different uh, these two different schemes? Well, it, if you're it, the the rationale has always been that if you're transferring a file, you need every single bit. If you lose one bit, the whole file's corrupt and it's not going to do you any good. Like so, a word document or an exe executable yeah, file exactly. or something in FTP, a zip file. You don't get the whole thing. It's corrupt and you, it's useless. Yeah, it, it's useless. Right. Without every single bit. So for, for those kind of things, we always use TC, uh, TCP. But if you're viewing, say, a live stream of the surf, the surf at Waikiki or something, yeah, yeah. That, that's like, it's, it's very time sensitive. So uh, if you should lose a few packets and ask them to be resent later, by the time they get to you, you're already past that point in the stream. It's Doesn't not going to do you any good. Right, right. So why bother with all that resending and acknowledgement? Just send it. You can send more raw data because you're not sending all of these acknowledgments and handshakes. So we'll just send as much raw data as we can and hope you know, for the best that, that it gets there. You know. well, now, gamers use UDP quite a bit. All you the know, time, yeah. Gamers will know because when they hook up their Xbox or their PS3 or you know, whatever system they're using and they want to do internet gaming, uh, what they have to do is they have to open up ports on their router, TCP and UDP ports, and arrange. So you can stream both kinds of data. You can get the, the files that you really want to all be there at the time. And you also have streaming media and gaming stuff that, like you said, once you pass that certain point in time, no use going back. Mm -hmm. You just got to keep going forward. So you might see a little hazy 
a little pixelated, get a little glitch. It might freeze for, part, for a second, you know, but then, 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 then when the stream is back, you just go forward the best you can. Yeah, that, that's where we get uh, music too, right? You, mm -hmm. you're driving in your car, you got uh, streaming music going on, uh, Spotify, Apple Music, that's UDP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. A any type of streaming like that is almost always over UDP. So TCP, uh, we built HTTP on top of that. Mm -hmm. So the, the beauty of HTTP uh, point 0.9 when it came out, it was like not even 1.0. Mm -hmm. uh, the beauty of it was it was a single ASCII line for the request. Then you just sent some ASCII text out and what you got back was HTML. Well, that's hypertext markup language. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the meta-based language or the tag-based language that gets interpreted by the browser. And mm -hmm. just to take a little pause here, for everybody out there that doesn't know about web programming, programming for the internet is probably the most difficult programming you can do because it's never just one language. HTML, you have cascading style sheets, you have JavaScript, you have a server-side scripting language like PHP or ASP.NET or JSP. And this, these things can add up to a lot of work. And then on top of that, JavaScript has multiple frameworks, right? We have, we have uh, the Google APIs that, that came out. We have, uh, what is it, jQuery. jQuery is a, a framework of JavaScript libraries. Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to put all those in your, in your uh, file to be interpreted by the web browser. Now the web browser interprets this thing on the fly, top down, left to right, reads it raw, Mm -hmm. and will display it as that browser is supposed to display it. That's why if I look at the same Amazon.com web page on multiple browsers, I'm going to see a little bit different web page mm -hmm. on each Sometimes browser, right? Yeah. There's going to be slightly different colors, slightly different behavior. Things will be in the different places just a little bit because mm -hmm. we're all pretty much on the same standard, but everyone does it a little bit differently. Yeah, there's always a little flexibility in those standards, so, you know, Microsoft Edge might do it slightly different than the way that you know Mozilla Firefox did it, but they're still hopefully adhering you know to uh, the standards. They're just maybe using a little, a little flexibility with it. And Microsoft does that more than anybody. Yeah, they're, the <laughs> they're, they're masters of. Yeah. We're going to do it differently. <laughs> I I remember uh, it, especially uh, our friend Steve teaches web programming, and he's going to have to teach uh, his students when you're writing JavaScript you have to allow for different browsers. If you're in Firefox, do this. If you're in IE, do this. And mm -hmm. it's a different line of code, but you do the same thing, well, depending on your browser. This is why when I was a web developer uh, back in the day, I used to have to test everything on three or four or five different times. I had, to, I had to test every page on every single browser to see if, if it would work. It wasn't enough just to try it you know, on Internet Explorer and okay, it works then, so I assume it's gonna work everywhere else. So you have to try it in all the different browsers and, and, and make sure that it works on all And multiple versions. Uh, and sometimes multiple versions yeah, as well. Because yeah. as we know, every time, as I'm going to pick up Microsoft, every time Microsoft comes out with a new Internet Explorer, it's major. The difference between 6 and 7, 7 and 8, 8 and 9 was tremendous. You got many more features and it was interpreted completely different. So I had to you know, open up Opera and Firefox and Chrome and multiple versions of each. Mm -hmm. And now we have Edge to add on top of that. So when you're a web programmer, that's, it's almost a full-time job just testing your stuff. It's, it's pretty terrible. But um, HTTP allowed us to be able to transmit this and make this a ubiquitous pro a protocol across uh, all the entire internet, mm -hmm. right? So we got the chance to start doing things like cascading style sheets, which is making all the graphics move and be where they want and give us some dynamic behavior. And you could use an interactive kind of website now with HTTP mm -hmm. rather than just the raw, you know, just text-based stuff. And streams embedded within web pages. You can have video streams, audio streams, uh, all kinds of things now. So the assumption up to this point has always been, oh, uh, a web page is, is, it, is like a file, so it should use TCP. But now, now, now Google is trying to say, well, wait a second. A web page, I'm streaming all kinds of different people pieces of, of this web page, is it really, is it really a file and, and, and should it really be on TCP or, or can we do this better and more efficiently by uh, trying to treat it as a stream? Because not everything is mission UAP. critical. And yeah. Not everything is critical to get it across. You can try again and it's not going to fail on you. Okay, let's take a little break. We're going to pay some bills. 
Be right back, everybody. Until then, stay safe. I'm Jay Fidel, Think Tech. Think Tech loves energy. I'm the host of Mina, Marco, and Me, which is Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, former legislator, and uh, Energy Dynamics, a consulting organization in energy. Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on ThinkTech. Aloha. Hey, Stan, the Energy Man here on ThinkTech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan, the Energy Man, at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Welcome back to our exciting episode of the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave, no longer the cyber guy, needing a nickname. Help me out. Uh, I'm with Hal, the networking guy, and we're talking about Google's new uh, implementation of the next HTTP version. They call it Quick. It's now going to be called HTTP3. We've gone through one and two. Uh, incidentally, Google was also responsible for HTTP2 as well. And actually, it didn't get finalized until just a couple of years ago. So we're not only advancing, but we're speeding up how fast we advance. So Kind of overlapping. Yeah, yeah and we get that asymptotic curve of, of technology just launching into the stratosphere now. Yeah. I think Moore actually pr predicted this, Moore's, Moore's Law. We were going to get we go faster and faster and faster and faster until mm -hmm. we have this little feedback loop of all the technology making everything faster. And I think we're approaching that rapidly. Um, just, just so you know, um, the cyber guy that I saw on, on Fox uh, was actually pretty good. Um, Cyberguy.com, I saw some of his articles in there. And we should actually have a show on what he was discussing, because he was discussing um, Alexa. And with this new Google protocol, um, I believe Alexa is going to be even more of a danger to our privacy. So oh, wow. they're, they're recording everything that gets said at all times, wherever Alexa's got a microphone handy, right? Listening for you to give commands, but recording everything you say, even in the background, and uploading everything to the servers at Google. And they do language protocol arrangements, so you could do AI and, and interpret what's going on in the background and help uh, get language interpretation better for Google. So it's helping us improve uh, speech recognition, right? On the other hand, uh, Everything you say is now stored at Google, which mm -hmm. that's scary, right? So we should do a show yeah, on, a on that. And um, it, it was a, it's less of a problem now with uh, Google's new HTTP3 because we're going to put everything over UDP, which we just discussed. And once that happens, we increase the uh, bandwidth availability and uh, speed of the internet by about 30%. So let's talk about HTTP1 again. Uh, okay. what it did for us, and then how, when we moved to 2 uh, about that. So HTTP 1, I remember this in the late 90s, right? They finally came out with a, an internet standard. But we've been programming for the web for five, six years. Um, Yahoo came out in 1994, right? And Netscape did its uh, IPO in 95. And this HTTP 1.1, I think, came out in 1999. I, it was a long time after we'd started this stuff. And I remember what a relief it was to think, oh, thank God, we've got a, we've got a standard. Mm -hmm. And then almost nobody stuck with it. Microsoft went on its own path. But it actually helped a little bit, I think. And with the next implementation that was almost a decade away, uh, we increased the, uh, the speed of the internet with a host of different things. All right, we got better routers. We got... Um, fiber optic connections now. Um, and just so our audience knows, and I'm not telling you anything new, but we were one of the first people, we were the first country on earth to have the internet. So we had old copper wire everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. When the uh, other countries like in Europe,
first adopted the internet, they did it in the late 90s or even in the early 2000s, and some of them went straight to fiber optic, mm -hmm. which was an amazing speed increase over what we had over here. And we've slowly been trying to upgrade our infrastructure, but as we know, infrastructure is hard to upgrade in the United States. <laughs> Yeah, we have all of, the, of this <laughs> legacy telephone network. Right. And so naturally, the uh, telecom giants want to leverage that. Sure. And not just rip it all out and put it in fiber. Stuff, but, yeah. but any new installations uh, anywhere are definitely fiber at, at this point. And right. we're slowly moving off of the copper. So it's not just the protocols and the, and the program that it makes everything faster. It's also the infrastructure. It's all, oh, yeah. also the way we move data. It's also switching technologies getting better every day. Uh, so there's, there's many things driving this, but Google has actually added a lot to this. And they added in about 2009, they came out with another thing called SPDY or Speedy, which became HTTP2 and sped up the internet. Most estimates are like 50%. And I think that's amazing to, to look back at 2009. What were we doing in 2009 that became faster. For me, it was things like Netflix. Oh, yeah, there's much more video streaming now than, than there was, you know, even a few years ago. So the, the things we're sending over HTTP now, it used to be, you know, pretty much text and it was images. Yeah. But now it's all kinds of, you know, streaming video, streaming audio, all kinds of dynamic content. It, it's really changed. So, I mean, you understand where Google's coming from saying, you know, this, this uh, the web isn't what the web used to be, and maybe it needs a new protocol to, to allow it to work more efficiently, you know, given what kind of things we're sending over HTTP now, you know, as yeah, opposed I to can, what we used to. Yeah, I can see that in the first decade of this millennium, uh, we had a huge shift to more mobile computing, a lot more file transfers, much more mobile gaming and uh, internet gaming, and a, a ton more streaming. And I know that in the 90s, it was uh, mostly adult content, let's just say, that was driving the need for more bandwidth, and uh, many people pushed that and were very emphatic about, we need more bandwidth, and when they looked into it, it was adult content. But starting this millennium, that shifted. Now, we still have a lot of adult content out there, because let's face it, us guys are pretty sick. But uh, <laughs> we also have a, a ton of internet gaming, and an enormous amount of streaming video and music. We've, we've just all gone to Spotify and Netflix and all the other, you know, Amazon Prime's got their video service and uh, HBO and all the movie channels now have their, their content streamed over the internet. Uh, even most of the, the, the CBS, NBC, the, the major players, they have a service you can sign up for, so you don't even need to subscribe to cable anymore. I mean, the, the cable companies, uh, I gotta admit, I turned off my cable box because I found I was only watching a couple stations. I don't have cable anymore either. So I bought those stations and now I get them over the internet. Now I still pay my cable provider for my internet connection. So mm -hmm. they still get a little bit of my money, but not like they used to. So everyone's got to make this huge adjustment and to compensate for us shifting so much of our economy onto the internet, we had to change the internet. Mm -hmm. and. Let's discuss that, some of the changes that we had to make uh, with this new protocol. What did Quick accomplish? You did some research. Uh, yeah, so uh, web pages used to be fairly simple. Right? They, they used to be the, you know, some text and, and, and some images, but now they're, they're much more complex and, and they, they're, uh, they're made of uh, content maybe coming from different sources that are, that are uh, embedded or you know, overlapped. Uh, so the way that HTTP uh, was set up using TCP is you'd make one connection, request one web object, receive that, open up another connection, request the next piece. Well, if you're looking at it, at you know, some of the web pages we have, now they're made up of you know, like a dozen different pieces. So you're gonna be making all of these different connections. Each one requires the TCP handshake to happen, all the acknowledgements. Oh, but we should mention, the reason why we have so many connections is because HTTP in its first iteration said, you make one ASCII one line request, mm -hmm. and when you, and you get, get your get response, response you're that's done. it. You're your done. connection is severed. Mm -hmm. So we've never, we've never changed that until now. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have so much traffic, is like we have to renegotiate every time I want something else. And like you said, web pages have multiple pieces of content to ship mm -hmm. back and forth. Uh, sometimes in the background, you don't even know what's going on. 
you can load the web page. And in the background, we call this asymmetric, or um, there's an AJAX connection, which is the, the asymmetric XML uh, JavaScript connection. You don't see it's going on, but if you click on something on the page, the page won't refresh, but in the background, another connection opens mm -hmm. up, right? And that adds to the traffic, right? So how are we shifting away from that with Quick or getting better with that? So one of the things that uh, they're able to do with Quick is, is send multiple objects over a single connection. So we're not setting up as many connections, tearing down as many connections, and that's a, clearly going to be a lot more efficient. Right? Right. They, they, they uh, call it multiplexing over you know, uh, a single connection, but, but essentially it's just reusing that connection uh, to send multiple uh, objects. Also, switching from TCP to UDP eliminates uh, a blocking uh, issue. So TCP, as we said, has uses secret numbers right, to, to show how the, all of the pieces are supposed, to, are supposed to fit together. Well, if you lose a packet somewhere halfway through and have to resend it, guess what? Everything stops and waits for that packet to come and fit into the sequence before we go and get the rest. And it might have to be resent, and yeah. you're waiting. And we're waiting. Everything is, is stops and, and waits for that. But with Quick, that's, that's not the case because we're using UDP, no sequence numbers. Right. right. So we just, we get everything, we fit it together like a jigsaw puzzle, hopefully in the right order, and then we display it. So it, it's a lot more efficient. Now we've all, we've all clicked on a web page and had a bad connection and half the web page assembles, yeah, sure. and then you have blank white space below. Or you click on a connection, you see a blip of something, and then it's a white page for three to four seconds, and that's what's happening. It's waiting for those packets to mm -hmm. catch up, yep. and, and that's so frustrating. And hopefully this alleviates that. In addition, it's adding some security, right? It's, it's forcing us to use security where now HTTP, you can do HTTP, or we can do HTTPS, mm -hmm. which is over a different port, now 443, and it's secure. So we, do, we negotiate um, an RSA connection and uh, exchange keys for encryption, mm -hmm. right? Uh, this, this forces us to do this every time. We don't have the option anymore. It's always an encrypted connection. And Everything, I think every single Google site is encrypted now. More and more of the web is encrypted and less and less is, is unencrypted these days. So yeah. this quick doesn't apply to uh, the unencrypted sites at all. This is strictly for those sites that are, that are encrypted. So the, in, in our final seconds here, I'm gonna just uh, tell people that uh, what this could do, and Cisco was putting this out there, is that not all systems can handle UDP connections right now. Mm -hmm. UDP might get blocked by default because no packet inspection can happen at all through a firewall if you're using UDP and it can't be decrypted. So as usual, security is catching up to the new standard. So if we all do this, uh, we might not have the great security that we have now. So Cisco put it out there, hey, let us catch up. So this, this new uh, protocol just came out. The final draft is out. We don't know when full adoption is going to happen. Uh, YouTube. We'll let you do this if you use Opera, the browser, or the other browser, Chrome. Also Facebook. And is, Facebook is will let you well. do this. And the, the beauty of it is if you try to make this connection and it fails because of some blocking or firewall, mm -hmm. it'll just fall back to your regular TCP, mm -hmm. HTTP2, which is OK yep. for now. Well, we're out of time. Thanks wow, for playing. fast. OK, everybody, thanks for joining us on the Cyber Underground. We'll see you next week for another great episode. Until then, stay safe.